Good morning, folks. Chief Baker here, Street Tactical Integrations here in Portland, Oregon, offering martial arts for self-protection and healing. And today's topic is Krenza. And Krenza is essentially weapons shadow boxing. Uh, so for those of you who know about boxing, shadow boxing is basically doing jab, cross, uppercuts, footwork without a sparring partner. So you're in the mirror, you're working, working different drills, moving around, right? That's shadow boxing. Krenza is basically the same thing. <clears throat> it's typically done without a partner. You can actually kind of do Krenza with a partner. The idea is that there's no contact. So, but in, in general, Krenza is working uh, your weapon without an opponent. There's a couple key ingredients in this, I think, to be successful with your Krenza. One is you need to have, you need to envision an assailant, right? You need to envision somebody who's attacking you, and so your strikes have purpose versus just randomly throwing out different maneuvers. Uh, sometimes it looks cool, it might look pretty, you look might look ferocious, but it doesn't really actually help you train in terms of managing an attack. You need to think visualize somebody attacking you. It's also something where if you have something like a training bob, right, is that you can have the training bob there and you can use that as your reference point, right? Um, you could use a post, you could use, you could put an outline, tape an outline on a mirror, a door, a wall, so that you have a reference point. So you either have to have an imaginary reference point of an attacker or something that kind of mimics or signifies, symbolizes an attacker. Uh, again, the idea of Krenza is that it's gonna boost your skill level uh, of managing an attacker. What that involves is working angles, working different strikes, working parries, working counters. So you want to kind of add those in as you develop. To me, Krenz and Shadow Boxing is an advanced beginner into an intermediate phase. Uh, essentially, you need to know enough about striking uh, and parrying and angles and footwork to do it properly. Otherwise, it's just kind of like ecstatic dancing. It's chaotic. It's pretty much purposeless, you just kind of look like you're spazzing around and doing, and it's not going to help you train to really manage an attacker. It's not going to really increase your skill level and your prowess. So you need to have enough uh, fundamental skills to be able to do shadow boxing or Karenza appropriately, effectively. Otherwise, I would say you're wasting your time and just go back to learning some fundamentals and then advance to Karenza. <laughs> okay. So we talk about footwork, um, whether, and depending on the system that you're doing, uh, whatever footwork has been a part of your training. Uh, in this school, Street Tactical Integrations, we do a lot of the Kali footwork. So we have female, male triangle, we have diamonds, we have M footwork, uh, and we try to incorporate those in, as well as uh, we do some of the boxing stuff of 180, 360, quarter turns, um, advancing, retreating, angling off, all those things that are helpful. So good footwork is important uh, to be additions. Again, different striking is important. So uh, if you're using a knife, right? So if you're using a knife, and yes, this is a trainer knife for those people who are worried about me using a live blade. I actually do use a live blade, but I'm not gonna do it on the camera. So this is a training knife, right? It doesn't, can't actually hurt me um, in lethal ways. Uh, so, right, in with a knife, you have two main strikes that people think of, right? You have your slashes, right? And you have your thrusts, okay? We also know that you can use the pommel side or the handle um, as a striking reference. Uh, you can use, again, you can move to military, right? You've got your slashes, you've got your thrusts. Um, here you've got your hooks for control. Uh, <clears throat> and you can, again, still in this, use your pummel 
to, to strike with. So those are kind of the basic ones. Um, if you've trained with me long enough, you know there's kind of different categories or subcategories of those strikes that we train to kind of help advance the student. But those are your general ones. So we want to think about slashes and thrusts, okay? Uh, and again, any sort of pummeling strike. So the, the, the process I think that works the best is start to work different patterns that you know, right? So here we've got our downward figure eight, right? And then you've got your upward figure eight. All right, so you can work those, right? You can work what we have here in our system, we have nine angles. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you've got those, right? Out of those, you also have the thrusts within those. So you've got some, of some, some fundamental kind of um, strikes with that. And you wanna start with a pattern. So in my school, I teach a bunch of different patterns, whether it's knife or stick, and you wanna start with those. So right now we're gonna start with our downward figure eight. One, two, right? And so you're just working that. And then what we're gonna do is work our some footwork. So as we do our strike, we're gonna do um, female triangle. So I'm gonna do one and the reset, and two and reset. One, reset, two and set one two right now we're going to add to that three and four so I'm gonna one two three and four and one and two and three and four okay so now we've got some footwork we've got some pattern work going right again right now it's kind of like we're drilling so now what we want to do is somewhat randomize it or not have it as just kind of a constant. So you're out here like this, we're going to work the same pattern, okay? So we're going to do one, two, three, and four. Um, our footwork is going to change a little bit, and this is, this is off the cuff, so I haven't thought about what I'm going to teach actually in this video. Uh, so the, the footwork, again, is going to be slightly different, but what you're gonna do now is you're gonna be moving, right? So you're moving around a little bit, right? And then you're gonna throw that angle one in, and you're back, right? And then you're gonna throw that angle three in, and back. Okay, now we're gonna do an angle two, so it's that angle two, and back, right? Now I'm gonna do a combination, so I'm gonna do a one and a four, so one, four. Moving, moving, moving. I'm gonna do an angle five thrust, right? Angle one, angle four, angle five. One, four, five, right? This target typically is to the throat, right? Boom. This would be to the lower abdomen, boom. And this, again, is to the abdomen, it could come up to the throat. So you're thinking about that, of good targets. Ooh. Boom, right? So you wanna think of that opponent, that assailant, right? The reason why you're using a knife is because somebody's trying to kill you. There's a life-threatening situation, that's why you're using a life-threatening weapon and life-threatening target, because if you feel threatened in your life, legally, it's in your best interest to do something that is going, if you feel your life is threatened, unfortunately, the best legal advice is to do something that is lethal to stop the lethal threat, okay? If not, the, the theory is that it wasn't truly a lethal threat and you could have gotten away or done something else. So, okay, going back to it, right? I got one, I got two, right? Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a diamond footwork. I'm gonna do that five thrust, boom. Okay, so here's the footwork. I'm gonna step back a little bit. I got one, right? Now I'm going to advance with my two, boom, and again, diagonal advance with my five, okay? So again, you're back here, right? right? So you're mixing up a little bit. Your strike, sometimes I step here, and if my, again, if, if something is happening over here and my knife is here, right, I don't wanna step into the threat or the, 
right? I want to step away from it. So you start to move, right? So now it's down here and I'm going to do an angle seven. So I'm kind of in the Philly shell, right? Right? So you're moving, you're moving, right? You're getting different things down. As you get used to this, you're going to start to be able to flow better. Fluidity in attack is crucial, right? Because it keeps you in motion. What it also does is it changes angles, right? So the person has to manage and uh, be acutely aware um, and in ways distracted by managing different angles. Um, so you can change your angles by the strikes that you do, by the footwork that you do, okay? So <clears throat> again, go back to some, if you start to get chaotic in a way that you believe is fairly useless, um, it may look fancy, but you recognize that this is not actually helping managing attack. Go back to your fundamental patterns, right? So we're gonna work ones and twos, and then threes and fours. Ones and twos, threes and fours. Ones and twos, threes and fours. Ones and twos, threes and fours. Now what we're gonna do just for fun is we're gonna add our parrying hand. So I call my non-weapon hand actually my deadly assassin because most people, reasonably, if you have a weapon in one hand, they're going to be concentrating on that weapon hand and not right, the non-weapon hand. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do one, four, and cross. Okay, so one, four, cross. Okay. So I'm angling off with my female triangle, so I'm stepping to the right. Boom. I'm stepping a little bit uh, kind of... In, an off angle as I do my four. So it's not a full female triangle in terms of a 45 degree. It's maybe like a 20 degree here, boom, right? Um, and then I'm throwing that punch, right? So I've got, right? And be careful uh, when anytime your other hand is going, don't have this hand kind of floating in the wind right, just wagging around, right? You wanna reset it somewhere. So it could be a chamber position here, it could be a high chamber position like this, it could be a chamber position like this, but get it ready, right, so that it's able to do something next, okay? Don't just kind of have it out. And that's what I see a lot of people is that their hand that's not doing something, right, ends up in outer space and is of no assistance to defending or offending, meaning striking or countering or parrying, uh, and you really wanna be careful of that. Okay, so going back to it, right? I've got one, right, two, and then three. So I've got my angle one, my angle four, and across. Right, okay, so the idea is that this offhand, right, can be utilized. You can use it, and it's best to use it. Don't just have it hanging out. If this is a knife fight, again, my students should know this and be practicing it, is that I want this hand in tight. Typically, I have it like this. Um, you could have it like this, but you want it in tight. You don't want it hanging out because if my hand is out here, right, this becomes a target for that knife. Okay, so if the other person has a knife or a stick or something else, right, I don't want this hand out, I wanna protect it, right? This hand getting injured is not gonna be helpful to offending, defending, and it's gonna be a distraction, right? If it gets broken, if it's a cut, it's gonna be a distraction. I don't need that distraction. Okay, so keep it in. Okay, last one we're gonna do um, in our Crenza, uh, again, is we're gonna throw, we're gonna, for, don't forget your feet, your legs, right? So we've got one, we're gonna keep with this pattern here. I've got one, two, punch, and then I'm gonna do a kick, boom. And uh, <clears throat> this type of kick is um, kind of an oblique or an inside kind of maybe soccer kick, I don't know what, um, we call it a stomp kick in the system, because uh, typically it's coming down, right, and you're 
stomping something. So I'm gonna go one, two, punch, kick. Typically this would be to the knee. So I'm gonna do this on five just so you can kind of understand what I'm doing here. All right? If you got this, right? I've got one, right? Two, punch, and then I'm gonna take out his knee. Boom, right? So I've got one, two, punch, boom. Right? Forgot footwork. Right? Punch and kick. Okay? So, again, you could target different things. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but I'm here like this, right? I'm moving, moving. And you don't wanna just do this as a, again, if this is shadow boxing, right? You want to break the pattern. So part of JKD, rhythm, timing, and distance, right? You don't want to do the same thing over and over. It's not like a choreographed dance step. So you want to move around, use your footwork a little bit, right? Right? You want to move and move and move and move. So you want to start off moving, right? We'll go back to the pattern. Moving, right? One, two, three, and then move again. Move around, move around. Maybe I'm over here, so I'm over here. I'm gonna add a little pox out in as I come in, so I pox out here, cut, right? I'm gonna cut high, because this arm is down here, right? Take this off, boom, still got that cut in, right? So you can vary it up depending on where you are, right? Moving, 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 moving. So, that's the idea of Krenza. Start with a pattern that you know. Then maybe you create a pattern, right? The pattern should be sensible. Don't make it some odd pattern that in terms of openings, movement, you know, part of Bruce Lee's work is efficiency, right? So you want your, your strikes to be efficient. If they're efficient, they're gonna be smoother and faster, which is very key. Uh, so that is a little bit about Krenza. The hoax is that, uh, well, hopefully you gain something from this. Um, if not, uh, in terms of a lot of information, it'll give you some patterns to work on, maybe some thoughts about how you are practicing Carenza. Uh, it's, again, it's gonna help you advance out of just straight patterns into now utilizing it for real combat, real self-protection, stuff that is gonna be valuable, in fact, potentially invaluable, because just doing this, right, against a skilled attacker, right, that's not necessarily gonna do much. If I just do this, right, somebody who's trained is going to be able to manage that, okay? For the average human being, if you take out a knife and say, get away from me, get away from me, get away from me, right, that will probably work. That's why fundamentals are crucial, right? Fundamentals are crucial. They will manage a farm, a, a big majority of attacks. The key is that I don't want to rely on somebody not knowing something. I also don't want to rely that somebody, there aren't multiple people, right? So if I'm just doing this and there's multiple people, I've got to be managing multiple people, right? But if I'm moving around like this, right? That, what that's gonna do is going to increase my ability to manage multiple attackers because I'm increasing my angles, my movement, I'm a harder target. So you wanna break out of the fundamentals and start to add in right, different things that will help you further your skill level and therefore further your ability to survive an attack, further your ability to protect people who are getting attacked. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Again, Chi Baker from Street Tactical Integrations. Hit that like button, hit that bell button, and we'll see you in the training room.